Even though it was Sunday and Phoebe wouldn't be there with her class or anything, and even though it was so damp and lousy out, I walked all the way through the park over to the Museum of Natural History. I knew that was the museum the kid with the skate key meant. I knew that whole museum routine like a book. Phoebe went to the same school I went to when I was a kid, and we used to go there all the time. We had this teacher, Miss Agletinger, that took us there damn near every Saturday. Sometimes we looked at the animals, and sometimes we looked at the stuff the Indians had made in ancient times. Pottery and straw baskets and all stuff like that. I get very happy when I think about it, even now. I remember after we looked at all the Indian stuff, usually we went to see some movie in the big auditorium. Columbus. They were always showing Columbus discovering America, having one hell of a time getting old Ferdinand and Isabella to lend him the dough to buy the ships with, and then the sailors mutinying on him and all. Nobody gave too much of a damn about old Columbus. But you always had a lot of candy and gum and stuff with you, and the inside of the auditorium had such a nice smell. It always smelled like it was raining outside, even if it wasn't. And you were in the only nice, dry, cosy place in the world. I loved that damn museum. I remember you had to go through the Indian room to get to the auditorium. It was a long, long room, and you was only supposed to whisper. The teacher would go first, then the class. You'd be two rows of kids, and you'd have a partner. Most of the time, my partner was this girl named Gertrude Levine. She always wanted to hold your hand, and her hand was always sticky or sweaty or something. The floor was all stone. If you had some marbles in your hand and dropped them, they bounced like madmen all over the floor and made a hell of a racket and the teacher would hold up the class and go back and see what the hell was going on. She never got sore though, Miss Agletinger. Then you pass by this long, long Indian war canoe, about as long as three goddamn Cadillacs in a row, with about 20 Indians in it, some of them paddling, some of them just standing there looking tough. They all had war paint all over their faces. There was one very spooky guy in the back of the canoe with a mask on. He was the witch doctor. He gave me the creeps, but I liked him anyway. Another thing, if you touched one of the paddles or anything while you were passing, one of the guards would say to you, don't touch anything, children. But he always said it in a nice voice, not like a goddamn cop or anything. Then you pass by this big glass case, with Indians inside it rubbing sticks together to make a fire, and a woman weaving a blanket. The woman that was weaving the blanket was sort of bending over, and you could see her bosom and all. We all used to sneak a good look at it, even the girls, because they were only little kids and they didn't have any more bosom than we did. Then, just before you went inside the auditorium, right near the doors, you passed this Eskimo. He was sitting over a hole in this icy lake and he was fishing through it. He had about two fish right next to the hole that he'd already caught. Boy, that museum was full of glass cases. There were even more upstairs with deer inside them drinking at water holes and birds flying south for the winter. The birds nearest you were all stuffed and hung up on wires and the ones in the back were just painted on the wall but they all looked like they were really flying south and if you bent your head down and sort of looked at them upside down they looked in an even bigger hurry to fly south. The best thing though in that museum was that everything always stayed right where it was. Nobody'd move. You could go there a hundred thousand times and that Eskimo would still be just finishing catching those two fish. The birds would still be on their way south. The deers would still be drinking out of their water hole with their pretty antlers and their pretty skinny legs, and that woman with the naked bosom would still be weaving that same blanket. Nobody'd be different. The only thing that could be different would be you. Not that you'd be so much older or anything. It wouldn't be that exactly. You'd just be different. That's all. You'd have an overcoat on this time. Or the kid that was your partner in line the last time had got scarlet fever and you'd have a new partner. Or you'd have a substitute taking the class instead of Mrs. Agletinger. Or you'd heard your mother and father having a terrific fight in the bathroom. Or you'd just pass by one of those puddles in the street with gasoline rainbows in them. I mean, you'd be different in some way. I can't explain what I mean, and even if I could, I'm not sure I'd feel like it. I took my old hunting hat out of my pocket while I walked and put it on. I knew I wouldn't meet anybody that knew me, and it was pretty damp out. I kept walking and walking and kept thinking about old Phoebe going to the museum on Saturdays the way I used to. I thought how she'd see the same stuff I used to see, and how she'd be different every time she saw it. It didn't exactly depress me to think about it, but it didn't make me feel gay as hell either. Certain things, they should stay the way they are. You ought to be able to stick them in one of those big glass cases and just leave them alone. I know that's impossible, but it's too bad anyway. Anyway... I kept thinking about it all the time while I walked.
I passed by this playground and stopped and watched a couple of very tiny kids on a seesaw. One of them was sort of fat and I put my hand on the skinny kid's end to sort of even up the weight, but you could tell they didn't want me around, so I let them alone. Then a funny thing happened. When I got to the museum, all of a sudden I wouldn't have gone inside for a million bucks. It just didn't appeal to me, and here I'd walk through the whole goddamn park and look forward to it all. If Phoebe had been there, I probably would have, but she wasn't. So all I did, in front of that museum, was get a cab and go down to Biltmore. I didn't feel much like going. I'd made that damn date with Sally, though. <laughs>